Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome. It is Monday, February 3rd. This is our first instructional committee meeting of February. First and only, actually, <laughs> instructional <laughs> committee meeting of February. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> our first order of business is, is to accept our uh, minutes from January 7th, 2020. Is there any discussion? I just gave the clerical uh, corrections to uh, the appropriate individual. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion on the meeting minutes? Let's take consensus starting with Mr. Votto. Yes. Yes. Yes with the corrections. Yes. 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 And yes. Um, so those are all set. So our next order of business is a presentation regarding hosting students from Strathmore Secondary College in Australia from March 29th to April 5th. Hi, everyone. Um, Hello. Nice to see you. We are proposing an opportunity to host students from Strathmore Secondary College in Victoria, Australia this past summer. Wallingford students from Lyman Hall and Sheehan, along with Dr. Menzo, Mrs. Latour, and two building administrators, traveled to Australia. And one of the highlights of the trip, for sure, was visiting Strathmore Secondary College and getting to see the, um, their VSEC station, which is housed on the SSC campus. The VSEC stands for the Victorian Space Science Education Center. And our students came home, along with the guise of Dr. Menzo and other um, faculty in the district, and they are implementing, a lot of you have had the chance to see it, Mary G. Fritz, we are implementing our own Center for Science and Center for Innovation and Design uh, modeled off of what VSEC had to offer to us in, in Victoria. So through a grant application that they were just awarded um, recently, they are hoping to travel here to stay with our eight students um, and view our STEM programming, get a chance to look at our curriculum experience, a lot that we have to offer here in terms of science and innovation. It'll also be a wonderful opportunity for our Wallingford students who came home and now are in pursuit of two things, a full capstone credit for their capstone experience and project, which will be getting the center off of the ground along with all of its programming for the Wallingford students and they are also in pursuit of the Connecticut Certificate of Global Engagement. So those students that traveled um, would be the reciprocal pairing for these students coming to visit, and it would, it would also be a really wonderful experience for our students as they're getting into the final throes of synthesizing all of the ideas that they have for the programming at the center. They would get to kind of have these eyes on it for, for, uh, in its final stages before they roll their project out. Questions? Just um, prior to this meeting, Kim and I um, Skyped with the staff, Michael, who you've all met uh, from VSEC, and the teacher that will be joining them uh, on the trip as well. And then the principal of Strathmore um, Secondary uh, College will also be coming, um, Jill. Um, so they'll be coming. We're looking to do uh, district days where the students will be in class, but then we're also looking to go to a large business campus. Um, in the along the coast of Connecticut uh, to have the students experience some science activities and STEM uh, career opportunities on that day. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do a tour of downtown Wallingford. Um, we're going to have them meet the mayor. We're going to go hopefully to the Silver Museum if Mr. Ross can assist us with that. Um, and then have a you know, little time, maybe a tour of the cemetery, uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, of course, have them go to Ag Science, um, hopefully have them go to Cook's Table for lunch. Um, and have them experience uh, the Ag Science Center because you know that's they were so impressed by that. The staff that came over from Australia were extremely impressed. Um, and then they're going to spend a few days in New York. They're going to on some pri on some tours on their own. So they're going to the United Nations. They're going uh, to the Australian um, mission or consulate, so to speak, um, and um, mm -hmm. maybe trying to organize help them organize a game at Yankee Stadium, of course, because <laughs> uh, they have to go see a real baseball team. <laughs> a real baseball team. One that doesn't cheat or have a manager that used to cheat. Yes. Yes. Here, here. <laughs> Sorry. Any other questions? Nope. Oh, that sounds exciting. great. We don't, we're not taking consensus or anything on that. We're just... No, just oh, okay. okay, so thank you, Kim. Uh, do you want to talk about Germany? Is yes. You? Yes. Kim, do you uh, want to use the podium? Is, would that be easier for you? No, it's okay. okay. Thank you, though. Make sure. um, our, our second item tonight that we're proposing is the opportunity to travel to Mutlangen, Germany. This is a, uh, an exchange that will be in its sixth year, which equates to three full cycles for our students. We have 
hosted, traveled, hosted, traveled, and last school year we hosted students from Franciscus Gymnasium for, for the third time. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity for our students that study German with Mr. Fleischmann at Sheehan, who's retiring this year, so we're, we're a little bummed. Um, at, Bet you he isn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bummed. No. Um, the, the cost of the trip is inclusive of the Alliance Global Insurance, which is what you as a board decided a few years ago would be an understanding that we would always purchase that, essentially cancel for any reason insurance. Um, it's also interesting to note that the principal of Sheehan High School, Mr. Zacco, will be going on this trip if it's approved. Um, and there are some wonderful academic opportunities for our students. So obviously what they will gain with the German language um, through input and output with the language, they will, they will gain a deeper appreciation of other cultures in the world. And there are two, um, there are two kind of influential academic pieces that Mr. Fleischmann has worked to put into place here for them. They'll be journaling throughout their experience and some of the prompts are listed here later in the, um, I think they're on page five or six that the students will be journaling about their, their development as a global citizen and will be uh, evaluating that journal experience based on the majority of the transferable skills that Wallingford has defined as paramount to our, our students' success here. The other large piece that he's put into place is a, um, an inquiry-based research project that will start here in the months before the students travel and it centers around a a green energy company that is in this in the town that the students will be going to so they will research the company and kind of develop a question of theirs that they hope to answer while abroad um, through experiences with the company and surrounding the company and mr fleischman has set up a round table opportunity for the students with the company managers towards the culmination of their stay where they'll get a chance to really kind of put their questions into action um, and we outlined some possible topics for what they might research, but uh, the onus will really be on the students in terms of what speaks to them about the global challenges that are faced by all companies, about the personal and public identities, contemporary life, science and technology. So the students will sort of chart their course, and we've identified the transferable skills that will be used to, um, to score that academic expectation while they're there. So, I would love to invite Mr. Fleischman to tell you a little bit more about the, the fun parts of the, of the trip. Welcome to you all. Um, well, this has uh, been a nice journey. Uh, we started this about six years ago now. Uh, it came through a very innocent email exchange. A parent asked me if we're interested in that. Uh, activity and then uh, we, we were lucky enough to have very nice uh, counterparts on the German side, how they responded to us. And I think overall what makes this program such a wonderful experience for the students and their parents so far is that the both communities are very compatible. Like there's a very, the socioeconomic uh, uh, demographics are very similar and uh, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a very safe place where we go. And it's at the same time very uh, entertaining. There's a lot that can be done. So I'll guide you a little bit through the through the itinerary. Uh, I don't want to make too much uh, take too much time, but since it's my last appearance, <laughs> in that sense, so I, I might as well kind of round it off a little bit. So th this organization that we actually joined after we started, uh, Gap, uh, goes back uh, into the 70s, 1972, and they have almost 400 thousand alumni and it means 400,000 students have traveled between America and Germany since it started that's a huge number and that's the crown jewel is always when they do out of that comes a single exchange where individual students either way stay for half a year they get special visas for that and all that but so we have had three of those exchanges so far and there's always just a few who do that longer for half a year but these short-term exchanges, as we call them, homestay, they're basically, we're traveling and we, uh, we already visit the, uh, the, the German, uh, our German uh, colleagues and the students, they come first. They come to visit us in Wallingford. So we, we look for the host families. We have usually, it's, it's not that easy to find uh, 20 families to, to host uh, students every time, but we were successful. Some had to take two just to make it work. 
And then so they know each other already. So we have bios that were exchanged <coughs> nowadays with all the, uh, the easiness of communication. The students can very easily, before they even uh, travel, they get to know each other already. They're Skyping with each other. Their parents have contact with each other. Uh, and then they came. They came last year in April. They came a little bit earlier this time because of their school schedule. So we are planning to travel at, uh, a week after our school ends. And since we have the snow day window, we have to always give it an extra week to make sure that nothing, uh, uh, there's no conflict. So we'll leave uh, the last week of June and then uh, basically fly to Frankfurt to get picked up from them with a the bus. And then they stay for almost two weeks. And a, a staying basically means they come on the weekend, they get to know the families. Each student stays with the family, They're in, including the chaperones. They also get hosted by uh, families. Uh, the family that I was staying with the first time, we, I always go to the same family now because you get so familiar with each other and we became friends and that we visit each other and all. And that happens with not everyone but with quite a few families that it extends beyond just that exchange. Uh, so that you know, the invitations are extended, people come from Germany and they come here and visit and then the host families take them on tours and the same happens in Germany. So. And then it's an alternate schedule pretty much. They go to school the first day, and they're, sh they're shadowing. And then the next day there's a local uh, visit by the mayor because it's a small town, only about uh, 5,000 uh, people, but the mayor always receives them. Uh, it's, a, it's a young woman actually, and she's already in her third experience now too. She looks forward to it. Actually, my vision is we, have, we were fortunate enough to host the principal this time. The, the principal of the school came uh, as a chaperone, and our principal of Sheehan High School will also go as a chaperone this time, which is a, a, a wonderful uh, situation. I'm very happy about that, and, and my goal is to actually encourage the mayors to do the same thing as the next round. <laughs> so that the, when the mayor comes here, and then our mayor. I, I already talked to him about it. He's kind of, his ears are up. <laughs> so, so that would be nice to kind of go into the community with it, since, uh, yeah. And then they, they do excursions, local excursions. They go to Rothenburg up the Tauber, which is a romantic city, just lovely. It's just so wonderful. Everybody falls in love with that. It's like Heidelberg, something like that. And then, uh, and then we go to Stuttgart. Stuttgart is a, is a regional uh, commerce center. Mercedes-Benz, Porsche have their museums and headquarters there. So that's an exciting place to visit. And then after this two weeks, going to school, having local excursions, uh, then we kind of concluded and then we'd go by train and travel to Munich and stay there for a day and kind of walk around Munich and see the city to some extent and then to take a night train to Berlin and stay for three nights in Berlin mm. to uh, Berlin is, is the capital as you probably all know and uh, there's a lot to see there including you know some of the, the getting in touch with some of the the, the bad history of, of Germany and Nazi Germany and also the, the time when East and West were, were divided. So it's a very historical experience. And I lived in Berlin when I was actually uh, still living in Germany. I lived in Berlin for three years while it was divided. So I can give a lot of uh, pretty interesting comments and, and give them a tour about that. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of what happens. And then we go back, two long train rides. And then this time we're flying back, hopefully from Berlin. We don't have to do another trip uh, with that. So it's embedded in this organization. They actually sent us a certificate, just if you know it exists, from the State Department. The schools get that saying, oh, they're very happy that we do these exchanges. And uh, yeah, so this will be the third round. And I don't know if you have any questions. Is that, yeah? My only question, and you might have answered it. The, the host families, are they people that they've already stayed with before, so you kind of know who they are? And or if that, not, how do you find out? They're not the same. Right. Uh, so every time there's a new, so when, when we host them first, we go and we find out who, who is interested to host. You are not required to travel, but most of the ones who host also travel. But there's not 100%. Some, some want to just host and not travel. We had a few this time. And then those, those who come, they, in Germany, they, have, they get vetted, just like we do. Absolutely. We have to call two or three uh, people that they know, references basically, okay. and we check them. We have to make those calls, and they do the same thing. Okay. And then when the vetting process is concluded, then they are allowed to come. But they also have to uh, 
they have to sign that they are so willing to host on their side. Right. We, they have the luxury, they have 80 application, applications and 20 can come. And our side, it's not quite the same, so <laughs> it's a what, little What more. was the name of that romantic city again? <laughs> Rothenburg. Rothenburg. It's R-O-T-H-E-N-B-U-R-G. So Rothenburg. It's very famous. Uh, Heidelberg, some people have heard maybe. Yeah, it's very similar. They are in the same, yeah. It's like a fairy tale kind of city. You walk around, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Caselli, just a... Uh, I gather they do they go school year round in Germany? No, they have vacations just like we have just the distribution of the v vacation is different. Their summer vacation is only six weeks, so that's shorter. But then they have a longer winter vacation and they have just the, the altogether the school days are almost the same. So oh. it's a total number of days. But how it's distributed is different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Levesque? All right, I'm going to I'm sure mispronounce this. Um, your excursion on page 11 to Neuschwanstein, Nurs Neuschwanstein yeah, that's Castle. castle yeah. um, Beautiful. My understanding is that some kind of a, a wildlife preserve as well. They have a lot of different animal life around the castle. That's possible. I'm not in, in particular familiar with this because uh, it's, I've only been, the only time I got there was last time on a visit. And you know, it's shameful for a German that you've never been in those, but it's that famous castle that Disney used as, yeah. as the model mm -hmm. for yeah. his uh, inspired uh, for the Disney castle. That's the, oh, you, you see pictures of it. And uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a few things that are attached to it. Mm -hmm. you know, as a, the, the main thing is the castle, but there's other, uh, sites that are interesting to see there, and I don't know specifically about the wildlife. So, I can comment a little. Oh. I was there two years ago, and the um, you have the option of like walking up to the castle, and then there's a town at the bottom and a lake um, yeah. off to the side. But um, there was no mention on our tour of there being a preserve nearby. But it is, you know, there is like optional. I think Whatever. I think they they do have quite a lot of very indigenous wildlife that they oh, well encourage it is folks in the forest, right. in, in, to as see. You see from it's pictures. a yeah, it's yeah. a very scenic. It's a hiking area. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I hiked it for a whole week. That whole there's a beautiful hiking areas in the Alps. Basically, it's Austrian Alps. Germany has a little bit of the Alps, but Austria has the big chunk of mm -hmm. the Alps. And it's a beautiful hiking area. And yeah. It sounds like it's going to be a wonderful opportunity for our students. Yeah, and I think it's, 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 that's what it's about, that the students uh, have a, make these connections with each other. I mean, I have some students in my classes, they talk to each other every day, and others, they talk to each other maybe every, every other month. It has the whole range, right? But some of them are really connected, and because it's so easy nowadays to really, they, they use YouTube, it doesn't, I don't know what I'm saying, YouTube, uh, WhatsApp, it's co it doesn't cost anything, so it's, you know, they do FaceTime, they do all these things, so, yeah, it's, it has changed. Technology has changed how, how, how they interact with each other. But it can vary a little bit from, from family to family. But so far, it's been, what I enjoyed most is when I see families then visiting each other and extending the invitations. And s at least three families, four families in each trip where the families kind of joined the student and they picked them up. They didn't even let them come back. And then they toured with the hosting families, and, and they gave them a tour for a couple of days, or went to Italy, or whatever they wanted to do. You know? So that's, that's fantastic when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? And if, I have to say, we, we have a pretty good budget, from what I know, we're almost half of what all the other trips cost. But for $1,600 that's for 16 good. days, that's amazing. most of the other trips are like $3,000. Wow. And, and they're sometimes even shorter than that. So Judy Gallagher is helping us to get good, we basically have the, the, the big expenses, the flight, because we, we have no choice, it's high season. If the, the Germans pay much less than we pay. <laughs> when they come, they pay like $800 for a round trip wow. ticket, and we have to, this year probably it's gonna be 1100 so yeah. that's the main expense. Yeah. But you know, it's still wonderful, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I look forward to it. I think they, so with the last year I have to say this briefly, it's a, it's a bigger topic, but this little town of Mutlangen, where the, where the high school is located, became nationally known uh, when, when I was a teenager. It was in the, in, in the news every day because the Pershing II rockets that the Americans deployed in 
Germany were situated in Mudlangen, in that town. Right. So the Americans had a huge base there. Mm -hmm. And the peace movement protested against it. They blocked the highways, they blocked the railroads, the Nobel Prize winners. But I mean, there's a whole museum dedicated to this, what happened in the 70s, basically. Mm -hmm. And so to be there, so when, when I, so with Mr. Andresen last year, we had the idea to say, we, we're going to try to find some of these eyewitnesses from that time. And our students had to prepare, they, they had to re read a lot of materials to become familiar with what happened there. And then actually we ended up having a panel discussion with, with some of the participants, the mayor from that time, the protest leaders. So they, they, all, they hadn't seen each other for a long time. <laughs> we invited them all and had a panel discussion about reflecting on what happened at that time. I mean, it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Let's take consensus on our trip to Germany, starting with Mr. Vado. Yes. 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 Thank you very much, Mr. Fleischman. Enjoy your and if we, yeah, I was going to say, uh, good luck in your retirement. Enjoy your retirement. We don't see yes. you again. Uh, our next order of business is grade 11 American literature. Killers of the Flower Moon, the Osage Murders, and the Birth of the FBI. Good evening, Carrie Ladadio, Secondary Humanities Coordinator. Um, and I have a copy of the book if anybody wanted to take a look at it. Thank you. Um, so this is a title that we're proposing to add to our grade 11 American literature and AP language and composition book list available <coughs> for teachers to use. Um, this is um, a, a nonfiction piece written in 2017 um, and has all of the appeal of a fiction uh, that um, wrapped into nonfiction. Um, I, I am almost done with it and it's absolutely riveting. Um, it deals with greed, racism, murder, all in the backdrop of 1920s, right around 1920. Um, the West, uh, development of the West, uh, the plight of the Osage Indian tribe, and the evolution of our justice system, um, and the development of the FBI and one of their first big murder um, trials. So we're, we're continually looking for ways to um, infuse more nonfiction in um, high interest nonfiction. So. This title was um, one that the teachers would like to add. I don't know if you have any questions. questions? Ms. Raccio? Is it available in audio? Uh, it is currently available um, in ebook, but I will check on the audio. I have not checked on the audio. It is on our overdrive system, but not as an audio <coughs> book. Though if it's available, we could always have it added. Okay. Yeah, this I'll is check the time on that. Of year, if it's not available, if the request goes in, they can have it recorded over the summer by a human voice, which is a lot more Perfect. preferred for students instead of computer voices. I'll, I'll definitely check on that. Awesome. Yes. Any other questions? Let's take consensus on Killers of the Flower Moon, starting with Mr. Vado. Yes. 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 Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, at this time, public comment? Comments from the public? This meeting is adjourned. Ooh.